I think abortion is totally wrong. I don't think it should ever be an option. You see me offering my family and what you're not able to offer your family. If you're pro-abortion, this is what you're supporting. I can make a whole video on Sarah Therese. She has done some wild things that for some reason nobody talks about them. I think all of us as wives, we really look at our husbands and go, you can do better. Wow. I made some people mad. <laughs> like really mad. 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 Sarah Therese is a Christian YouTuber. Her channel is about minimalism, motherhood, and keeping a tidy home. But she's created some pretty controversial videos. And in these controversial videos, she shares some of her conservative Christian beliefs. In this video, I'm gonna share a brief history about Sarah and her rise to YouTube success and her most recent decision to leave YouTube. I'm gonna discuss how Sarah got started, how she got popular, and major milestones in her YouTube career. I'm also gonna talk about her three most controversial YouTube videos and why people have such huge problems with those particular videos. And I'm also going to discuss my interpretation of Sarah as a creator and the role she's had in the YouTube community. And my name is Erica Vieira if you're new to this channel. Here's a disclaimer, and I wanna make this abundantly clear. I am in no way here to trash or talk badly about a creator. In fact, I do what I do with my YouTube coaching, my courses, my channel management, and my podcast where I interview female YouTube creators because I have a lot of respect for them. Embarking on this difficult, demanding, high intensity journey and for their willingness to put themselves out there, serve an audience without any kind of guaranteed ROI, and create communities and places of belonging for hundreds, thousands, and even millions of people. Digital creators are often role models within their communities and niche. But they're also role models that are flawed and imperfect. And in other words, human. They're also paving the way for thousands of women to create their own online empires and pursue their own creative freedoms. None of us would be here if it wasn't for the Michelle Fonz, the Miranda Sings, and the Jenna Marbles that came before us. The purpose of this video is to examine Sarah's history on YouTube and learn from both her successes and the controversies in a balanced, objective way. I'm not here to take sides, and my goal for these videos is to better understand creators, their motives, why they make the choices that they do, even if they're not always the best choices, and help you, my fellow creative, learn from their journeys. But most of all, bring the humanity back to creators, understanding that they're human just like the rest of us, many of which, just a few short years ago, were not influential, did not have thousands of eyes judging them, analyzing their every word and picking apart every gesture and action. I mean, it's exhausting just thinking about that. Many have been thrust into this influential role, some out of a desire to be there, and some landed into it by accident. But all have had to pay the price of such influence. Some embrace the role with grace. But I do want to tell you how unbelievably sorry I am. And others make mistakes. And this series is to take a look at these journeys, both good and bad, and learn from them so you, as a creator, can better navigate your own journey creating content and being an influencer. Okay, so let's just start the story right, right where everything happened, so I guess Let's get started with Sarah, who, by the way, came out recently that she's actually leaving YouTube for good. I was working on this video a few weeks before she made that recent announcement. I did go through and update my analysis with this new piece of information in mind. Sarah Therese is a 26-year-old YouTube creator. She lives in British Columbia, Canada, and at the time of this recording, she has 1.2 million subscribers. Her channel focuses on her life as a wife, a mother, minimalism, healthy habits, lifestyle vlogs, and a lot more. She is a devout Jesus follower and fundamentalist Christian. Sarah frequently identifies herself as a proud wife. She married her childhood crush, Kieran John, when she was 19 and he was 21, and together they have four kids. Both Sarah and her husband were raised as fundamentalist Christian, and they were homeschooled, which is actually the norm for that particular subset of Christianity. So what exactly is fundamentalist Christianity? You might have already heard of some of the famous fundamentalist families like the Duggars or the Bates families. These large families of 19 children achieved fame and in some cases infamy, but that's a different story not being covered in this video, after getting their own reality television shows. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, fundamentalist Christianity is a branch of American Protestantism that arose in the 19th century. Fundamentalists believe in core Christian beliefs, including the historical accuracy of the Bible. 
Most fundamentalists don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't dance, they don't consume any media that's not religious in nature, meaning TV, movies, or music. Some very strict fundamentalists have strict rules on dating or courting, abstaining from intimacy until marriage, or for some very strict fundamentalists, like the Duggars or Bates, this can include kissing, hugging, and even hand-holding, modest dress, gender roles, and often homeschooling. But like any religious subset, there are varying degrees of adherence. While Sarah is a fundamentalist Christian, she might not be as extreme in her beliefs as some other famous fundy families. But let's get back to Sarah. So growing up, Sarah was very creative early on. She loved crafting and she loved her homeschool curriculum because it really allowed her to express her creativity. Eventually, she found her way onto YouTube. Now this was a long time ago and Sarah dabbled in it as a young teen and it really gave her something that was her own amongst her siblings. I was homeschooled all my life and in that I was kind of grouped with my other siblings. If they did an activity, I was doing the exact same thing and it was my way to be very creative and to branch out, I guess you could say. I interviewed Sarah last year and she talked a little bit more about how she got started on YouTube. So if you are interested in learning more about that, you can check out that video right here. Like many creatives, Sarah felt that the world was kind of at odds with her creativity. She knew she had talent and she had this creative gift, but she wasn't feeling any kind of validation from the world for it. She was unsuccessful and unfulfilled in her jobs. She would quit her jobs or she'd get fired, but she found that YouTube helped to fill that creative hunger that she had. So Sarah started her channel at the age of 17, where she was only focusing on beauty. But over time, she realized that people were actually watching her channel and that she was actually building a community. It wasn't about her anymore, about her creative outlet or trying to find something fun to do, but it was about her viewers now. Sarah later switched to more lifestyle content after starting her family. You know, after having her family, having kids as a mom, Sarah didn't really have time to do her makeup anymore. She just wasn't interested in creating this content where she was focusing on makeup. Sarah said that the shift away from beauty videos was for a way to focus and reflect more on her inner beauty. Sarah still did some beauty videos, but she also started creating videos about other things that were really important to her, like nutrition, self-care, and mental health. After finally getting fired from another job, Sarah broached the idea of being a stay-at-home mom and a full-time creator to her husband, and he fully supported her in that decision. As time went on, Sarah had more and more children, and her content continued to evolve and reflect the changes that were actually happening in her own personal life. She made a video announcing a change in her content called 10 Healthy Habits to Start Today. This video starts the official relaunch and rebrand of this channel, Sarah Therese. And the response was very positive. The change was that she was no longer going to be doing beauty at all and going to be really focusing on this content that revolved around her family. I've interviewed a lot of creators and this shift in content or this idea of wanting to shift niches is actually very common. There is an ebb and flow to content creation and as we get older and we reach different milestones in our life, our content is likely to reflect that and our audience as a result may change as well. I often see people getting burnt out and sometimes it just takes that change or an awareness of that change to reinvigorate you back to creating content. I also work with a lot of creators who feel that their channel is stale because they've evolved in their own personal life but their content hasn't. They feel stuck in the 2015 version they were or whatever year it was when they blew up. So back to Sarah. She then decided to delete 200 makeup videos from her channel. So just think about that for a second. Think about all the work that goes into one video. The preparation, the filming, the editing, the thumbnail, the SEO. That was a lot of time and effort I put into all this stuff. Now, multiply all of that by 200. And that's how many hours of work Sarah just let go down the toilet. So what would make somebody do something like that? Well, according to Sarah, she was tired of being known as a beauty guru. And they'll be like, hey, you're the beauty guru. And I'm like, no. And she felt that that title, what she was known for, that kept her boxed in and that she could never really grow beyond that. It just kept her stuck. She felt stuck with that label. What about all that ad revenue that she lost? I mean, she had a ton of videos out there getting a lot of views and it's poof. It's gone. So Sarah did worry about that. As luck would have it, she actually broke even. 
and she later actually even increased her revenue. So, you know, in the long run, it was a good decision. And at first though, she saw a drop in her subscribers, but it wasn't long before she was getting a lot of views and a lot of new subscribers from her new non-beauty content. As someone that works with a lot of YouTube creators, this is a common practice I see of people changing their niche and getting more in touch with a different audience. Sarah knew that her new content wouldn't necessarily appease her old beauty community, but she kept going in this new direction and eventually she grew an even bigger audience. And it was a good thing because she felt more aligned with this new content. And as a result, she was more inspired. She was more excited to create content. And you could argue that this new inspiration helped her be more excited and more charismatic in front of the camera, therefore resulting in better content overall. Which is why I'm a big fan of people making these types of changes. If their heart's not in their content anymore, maybe it was years ago, but if it's not anymore, then it doesn't make sense to continue on. It'll just lead to burnout or a channel slowly dying because the audience can sense that the creator is no longer interested in this type of content. As Sarah finalized that transition out of beauty and more lifestyle, she started creating more content about the things in her life that were really important to her. And one of these, of course, was her religion. Now, once again, I'm not here to really discuss religion or knock anyone's religion or talk about different people's beliefs. That's not really the point of this video. The point is really to focus on Sarah and her journey on YouTube. But you can't really talk about Sarah and her channel without talking about her religion. Sarah started talking about her Christian beliefs in her videos and a lot of her beliefs really didn't align with her viewers. Her viewers were pretty surprised as to how extreme she was on some of the topics and that she literally followed the Bible at its word. So let's get into these three controversial videos. In the Bible it says that the Lord gave people meat. They gave them the beasts of the field to use. They gave them these animals in order to fuel their bodies. Controversial video number one. In 2018, Sarah uploaded a video called Honest Opinion on the Vegan Community and Why I'm Not Vegan. So why was this video so controversial? So a lot of diehard vegans took issue with the video, but even non-vegans thought her explanations seemed to contradict her Christian beliefs. She ended up turning off the comments and disabled the likes and dislikes likes on that particular video. She started off the video by saying that she's not a perfect person. She's still learning. She herself is not really good with words or expressing herself with words. And also that she was planning on disabling the comments right away because of all of the negative feedback that she has gotten from some of her other videos where she has talked about veganism. Sarah states that she was initially attracted to veganism because of the inhumane treatment of animals and that she really didn't really consume dairy anyways. So. Why not? She also said she realized over time that she missed meat and that she liked eating meat and that she felt that meat was good for her body. And she decided that she did want to consume meat in a way though that was more ethical and sustainable. And I watched Cowspiracy, I watched all the documentaries. I really was kind of like, whoa. I wasn't as appalled as maybe some people are, but I definitely took a step back and I went, this isn't okay. But then she went on to say that she believes that the Bible says that the Lord gave humans meat. Even in the Bible, how many, literally millions of animals were sacrificed because God told his people to do so. God gave us animals to serve us. While she unequivocally does not endorse inhumane treatment of animals or the negative effects on the environment, she does support locally ethically farmed meat. And she does believe that that's a better way to eat meat and respect God's creatures and their place in the world. So as she's formulating this reasoning and talking about her reasoning as to why she's not vegan anymore, she then throws in her anti-abortion stance in the whole mix. I said I have a huge issue with that whale that miscarried her whale and everyone's freaking out about it and no one is talking about how 150,000 babies are aborted every single day from the womb of their mother. Don't you think that's wrong? And a lot of people who saw this video had issues about her strong personal beliefs related to veganism and abortion. A lot of Christian vegans chimed in on their thoughts with this video and a lot of them actually disagreed with her and they believed that she misrepresented what was written in the Bible. A YouTuber, her channel is called Unnatural Vegan, she was one creator who made a response 
response video to Sarah's veganism video. And her video has over 200,000 views. At this point, over 1,300 comments. So a lot of people had a lot to say. And there is nothing in the Bible that tells you not to use reason. And there is nothing that tells you as a Christian not to be vegan. Not Acts 10, 13, and no, not even Romans 14, 2. Faith can be an inspiring and motivating force for good, but when people use faith in place of reason, when they use bad scriptural interpretations to justify doing harm to others, it's quickly corrupted into a force for bad instead of a force for good. It's very disappointing to see people like Sarah appealing to their Christian faith, um, using it as an excuse to ultimately kill animals for personal enjoyment rather than for sacrifice or survival as the Bible allows. There are a lot of comments from other Christians who are vegans on the video that affirm a natural vegan's take on Sarah's video. And that some people even went as far as saying that Sarah had a poor understanding of God's word and veganism. And they actually called her a hypocrite. I mentioned abortion briefly in this controversy, but I'm gonna dive deeper into her stance on abortion, which is in her controversial video number two right now. Next, I want to talk about rape and incest. The baby, again, is not responsible. One crime doesn't make it okay for another crime to be put on an innocent person. In this video, Sarah stated her views on abortion. I think abortion is totally wrong. I don't think it should ever be an option. And I think any time that you are killing a baby, whether the baby is born or unborn, it's not right, and I would say it's purely evil. Sarah is against abortion in all circumstances, giving no exceptions at all. Sarah says in her video that a parent's inability to care for the child is not a reason for an abortion. She believes that it's up to the parent to change their own circumstances so that they could take care of the child. And when it comes to rape and incense, since it's, quote, not the baby's fault, then it's still not a reason for an abortion. Next, I want to talk about rape and incest. This was probably the main comment I got from a lot of people. Well, I only agree with abortion if it is out of rape or incest. Therefore, I think abortion should be legal. Let's just get something straight. Those who rape are disgusting and evil and 100% they should be castrated. It is disgusting that people do this, especially to young girls. It breaks my heart in two, especially as a mama of two girls, to imagine someone raping them. I can't even fathom it at all. The baby again is not responsible. One crime doesn't make it okay for another crime to be put on an innocent person. That doesn't make sense. That's not logic. Sarah's belief that if someone doesn't want to be a parent, then they should take responsibility from the get-go and either abstain or use birth control. And in the video, she shares a lot of examples of women who were raped and still had the baby who lived happy, fulfilled lives. Once again, for this video, Sarah disabled the comments. And people, they didn't really like that. <laughs> they didn't like that she disabled the comments. She responded to that by saying it was her channel, her video, and that she could do whatever she wanted. And I can do whatever the heck I want to my channel. I can disable as many comments as I want. I can block as many people as I want. I can really do whatever I want. And. I think that's awesome. Now, there is no denying that the topic of abortion is a very charged and highly emotional one for everyone. And this video had a lot of criticism, not just for her extreme views, but for presenting things as fact that have been widely debunked. A Christian YouTuber called God is Gray created a response video that has over 250,000 views and 3,200 comments. And in the video, she dissects Sarah's reasoning piece by piece. She debunks the claims that Sarah made in her video with some evidence. So like for example when Sarah claimed that Planned Parenthood discourages ultrasounds because they don't want mothers to connect with the fetus and see it as a living thing. Now Brenda, she debunked this by stating that Planned Parenthood's policy requires an ultrasound on the pregnant mother before performing an abortion. Painting providers as heartless devils is a generalization I have never seen in real life. Planned Parenthood performs an ultrasound before for a termination, whether the pregnant person wants it or not. Now, Brenda says that Sarah represents the extreme side of the pro-life movement because she doesn't believe in exceptions, such as rape, poverty, or the health of the mother. And Brenda argues that being pro-choice doesn't mean you're pro-abortion. It means that you're pro-woman being able to have choices. Countries and states that criminalize abortions cause more harm than good, according to Brenda, and lead to more abortions. Basically, banning an abortion isn't gonna stop them from happening, but 
but it will make them safer. And according to Brenda, you can be against abortion for yourself and still be pro-choice. Well, there are a lot of positive comments from other Christians on Brenda's video, basically condemning Sarah, her reasoning, and praising Brenda for her research on this video. What I've learned with Kieran, when he comes home, if you need to shower, Kieran, go ahead and shower. Kieran, I know it's Saturday morning. Go ahead and sleep in. I got the kids. Instead of always putting these expectations on him to be with us, stay close, be more involved. So controversial video number three. In this video, Cher shares your tips for women on how to be a good wife. And these tips include being affectionate with your husband in private and in public, to listen to your husband and keep his heart, mind, and secrets safe, know what your husband's love language is and feed it, and give your husband space when he needs it. For this video, Sarah left the comments up and there are a lot of very positive comments left by her viewers, thanking Sarah for her selflessness and thanking her for her advice. Not all the comments are positive. There are a lot of other comments saying that Sarah's advice was cringe and outdated. One commenter on Reddit responded by saying, I would be fine with it if her husband did it with her and it was a video about things you can do for your partner. Even if she did it on her own but made a list of things you should require out of your partner like being respected. This is why women end up in bad situations because you see these lists all the time but you don't see a lot of lists about what you should get out of a healthy relationship. Those are three of Sarah's more controversial videos and you can see that they're all pretty tied into his strong conservative religious beliefs. But the controversy doesn't end there. Recently Sarah's channel just mysteriously disappeared. Just completely disappeared. Every single YouTube creator's worst nightmare. What's more interesting though is that right before her channel disappeared she posted another actually somewhat controversial video called Opening Up and the comments were very mixed. The people that were not very positive called her self-righteous and cocky. Sarah had mentioned in the video that she can't believe the amount of hate that she receives for having a house that really works well for her. People label it as being unrealistic and no one is like that and no one can actually reach that and you're lying because there's no way that someone can do what you do and do it 24 7. To you my life may be totally unrealistic and something that you couldn't do or something you wouldn't want to do but please realize that I'm not sharing my real realistic life with you to make you feel less about the life that you've been given by God. Um, or the personality that was weaved into you by God. This statement rubbed people the wrong way because what she's basically saying is that I'm sorry that you don't live the perfect life that I do, but you could have it if God gave you more determination. Many people on Reddit and in her comments seem to dislike the fact that she makes mothers feel bad about not having their life all together. And here's Sarah's response to that. Through creating content, Sarah realized that she was inspiring other moms to try different things and do different things to improve their lives. And I don't want that to sound horrible, but I don't create content for people to be like, oh, that felt good, that's just like me. And if you feel that sick, that's cool. But I created my channel to really challenge people, um, to really um, maybe inspire people, and to excite people to see someone doing something very different than maybe a lot of other people do. I wanted to be different. I didn't want to be the mom that everyone could relate to. But still, some commenters felt that Sarah was still making other mothers so bad for enjoying the things they enjoy, like Netflix. One commenter picked up on just how a controversial video might benefit her channel by driving up views and engagement. There is obviously a big benefit to engagement, but creating a lot of engagement isn't always a good thing, and that maybe Sarah was manipulating her content. I mean, they say all publicity is good publicity, right? And especially on YouTube, I mean, there's a lot of drama channels. There's a lot of drama. You wonder why are these people always in so much drama, right? It makes them more relevant. It makes people talking about them. In this case, what do you think? Do you enjoy watching aspirational channels? People that live these perfect lives that can inspire you and motivate you to achieve more in your life? Or do you see it as a way of bragging, of rubbing it in? It was after this video that Sarah's YouTube channel appears to have been hacked. In
In a post on her Instagram, she said, I went downstairs. I looked at my computer station for a long time. Feels weird that all the time I spend here can just be deleted in a matter of seconds. Guys, this isn't how I imagine retiring from YouTube, leaning on the Lord and all the goodness he has provided for us. He is our refuge. But of course, when this happened, the conspiracy theorists out there got to work. Redditors believe that this is more than just a hack, that she might have deleted her channel or somehow found a way to hide her content as a way to completely rebrand. Other comments focus on the volatility of having YouTube as a primary source of income. And someone says, I think this is a shining example of people who use private companies like YouTube or Instagram who make it their entire livelihood while posting content that can easily go against terms of service. I don't really think she was hacked, but that's just my two cents. But then after that, after her channel came back, Sarah recently disclosed that she will no longer be doing YouTube. She revealed more of her experience with getting hacked and in hearing her experience, I think that she probably was hacked, but who knows, no one will really know. Nonetheless, the experience gave her a new perspective. It made her realize that maybe she didn't want the responsibility of having this channel anymore. So she mentioned in a recent video that she sacrificed a lot in her personal life by having her channel, like friendships and even time with her family. She felt mentally and physically drained even after hiring an assistant and going down to one video a week. She ultimately decided that her channel being hacked and not knowing it was gonna be back was a kick in the pants from God for her to actually leave her channel. She decided she will still be online as a creator, but more on Instagram and her blog and no longer on YouTube. There were a lot of very positive and supportive comments in that video and a lot of video creators coming forward saying that they completely understand her decision to leave and wanting more time with her friends and family and that YouTube can be a very overwhelming and time intensive platform to be on. So after analyzing Sarah, spending some time studying her, here's my take. But I do have some questions for you as well. Sarah's videos are controversial and extreme. She is aware of this and she acknowledges that she enjoys making controversial videos because it makes people think. But I still like to throw in some videos that make people think and talk because I just love filming controversial videos. You guys just love when I do that. And because of how open, honest, and forthcoming she is in these videos, she has lots of people that both love her and agree with her extreme views and even see her as a leader in her community, but then others that find her videos really problematic, outdated, judgmental, and self-righteous, as I mentioned earlier. Keep in mind, and one point that I want to mention is that the vast majority of Sarah's videos are actually very benign. She talks about organizing, cooking, parenting, and other non controversial topic. So her fundamentalists and her controversial beliefs are not something you might notice unless you dig deep. And it's important to note that her most popular videos are actually not the most controversial ones, which I was surprised to see while doing the research for this video. So at a casual glance, a lot of people would see her channel as a positive and inspiring Christian channel for other women. But as I shared in this video, in some of her more controversial videos, her views are extreme and outdated, even for a lot of Christians. I believe that Sarah truly in her heart believes that everything she says and is being her authentic self on her channel. But the question is, was she also doing this or creating certain videos because she knew that the controversy would boost her channel? Was she leveraging her extreme views to win over the algorithm, therefore getting her more views and ultimately more income? And then the real question is, if she was, is that necessarily so bad? Because if she is being herself and she is being authentic, isn't that what we ask of YouTube creators? Isn't that what YouTube is about? YouTube is all about people sharing their thoughts and beliefs with others, even if people don't agree. And if this is truly how Sarah thinks and what she believes, then isn't she just completing the assignment of being a YouTuber, even though her views are unpopular and can be problematic? So then the other question is, why does she do it? If she knew her beliefs were so controversial and that was opening herself up to a lot of criticism and being canceled, why not just stick to the minimalism, smoothie making, parenting videos that have given her a lot of views and income? As I mentioned earlier, Sarah has admitted that she likes posting controversial videos to spark conversation, but then why would she turn off the comments? It's like she wanted to add fuel to the fire, but she didn't want to burn the whole house down. And in my opinion, you can't really have it both ways. 
Don't dish it out if you can't take it, so to speak. And I see why there's so much chatter and discussion around Sarah. She's steadfast in her outdated extreme beliefs. She's amassed a rather large following and she has a certain amount of influence, especially around the topics of minimalism, motherhood, and labor and delivery. Her most popular videos are actually her at-home labor videos. And she sticks to them and she doesn't allow the negativity to change her, which I give her some credit for that because it can be very, very difficult to be in that position as a creator. Even though her views are controversial, I admire someone who is so honest, who is so authentic in her beliefs. It takes a lot of strength to stay so steadfast in light of a lot of negative feedback. One Christian blog lists the top 15 Christian YouTubers with Sarah at number 10 and has this to say. This is such an inspiring channel to watch. Sarah is a young wife and mother of three and a lot of her videos are centered around the home with a focus on minimalism, natural living, health and beauty. She also does fun series like Wife Talk and Mom Talk and her healthy habits and food related videos are probably my favorite. They are so mo motivating when it comes to clean eating and healthy living. Sarah is very vocal on her channel about her love for God and how the Bible influences the way she lives and it's encouraging to see. An article on Medium.com sees both sides to Sarah Therese. The author Angela Schwartz describes Sarah and her life as everything in her home is neutral colored, including her and her family's wardrobe. She has a method for everything, her laundry, her cooking, her cleaning, her hair, her makeup, her work, her acne. She's seemingly perfect and after a long day of imperfection, it's nice to stare at some clean lines and be told how to live my life. This sort of perfectionism though brings up some interesting questions and concerns. The author brings up a good point that watching perfectionism is so numbing and can help people forget about the chaos in their own lives. But the thing is nobody's perfect, not even Sarah. You can never reach perfection. It's just gonna dangle like a carrot in front of your face and the end result could result in you feeling like you're not good enough. But is that feeling of inadequacy the creator's fault? I mean, if a viewer feels badly because they see perfection in a creator, the perfect clean home, the perfect food, the perfect face or hair or clothes, the perfect children, you name it, should the creator be held responsible for these feelings? Should they stop creating their content to make sure that subset of viewers don't feel bad about themselves? Or is it up to the viewers to hold on to some kind of sense of reality and understand that in the world of social media and content creators, creators only let you see what they want you to see. And that viewers should realize and understand that nobody's perfect and some of what they see on social media isn't even real. It's curated. It's edited. There's no denying that Sarah is very extreme in her beliefs and that people are always gonna have reactions to her extreme views. This is plain to see in the comment section of many response videos. And as a side note, Sarah, as I mentioned, is no longer creating any new content on YouTube. She says she is keeping her videos up. So people will come across her channel even after she's done creating content. And maybe you're just discovering her channel now, even after she's left. But what do you think? Do you think Sarah is aware of her extreme views? Does she know how controversial she is? And if she's aware, and I think she is, why do you think she chose to talk about these hot topics? Is it for views? I mean, when I look at her most popular videos, I was surprised to see that her controversial ones were not her most viewed. And now at this point, she's given up on YouTube. Does she have a change of heart? Did she realize she no longer wants to share her views and deal with the consequences of that on YouTube? And so why did she open herself up to this kind of criticism when she could have just stayed quiet? Like I said, her most viewed videos were not her most controversial, so she was getting good views without being controversial. Is there something more to this? Is she so steadfast in her beliefs that she's using her YouTube channel as a ministry and is trying to spread the Lord's word to others? Is she hoping to bring together other fundamentalist Christians? So let me know in the comments. And also let me know if there's anybody else that you want me to cover. Influencers are so fascinating and they make some interesting decisions for the whole world to see. I do enjoy doing these deep dives. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And if you did more of Sarah, like I mentioned earlier, I did do an interview with her. She was absolutely lovely. I enjoyed my time with her. So definitely check it out here. And if you want to check out more creator analysis videos like this one, you can also check out my video with Lydia Elise. Bye.